are not aware that disobedience is a spirit of the world. And this spirit is an enmity with God. This spirit, of, this spirit of disobedience is an enemy of God. Amen? According to Ephesians chapter 2, 1 and 2. Jesus' choice to obey his Father's will will do what? Would lead to suffering, <clears throat> excuse me, and even to death. Mm. So says Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. This is what it says. This is what Paul said about Christ. And coming to a close, once again, Jesus' choice to obey his Father's will would lead to suffering and even to death. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Yes, Come on, church. Yes, and being found in fashion as a man, what did he do? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, yes, even the death of the cross. Thank God for Jesus. Praise Come on, give God a praise. praise Verse 9 says, Wherefore, <laughs> And therefore, God highly exalted him. Yes, he did. And gave him a name which is above every name. Yes, he did. That at the name of Jesus, yes, every knee yes. should bow, every tongue should confess yes, that Jesus is Lord. Come yes, on, give up. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm going to follow the example of Christ. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. God has brought me too far. Yes, sir. To leave me now. Yes, sir. Hey, we come this far by faith, church. Yeah. Leaning what? On the Lord. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Satan is a loser, amen? And yes, he's a liar. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Right in the midst of our Praising, a woman came by to tell me she came here for prayer because her daughter was dying with cancer. Mm. And she just stopped by to tell us that God answered our prayer. And healed her dying child mm. from cancer when the doctor had told her ain't no hope for her. Mm. There ain't no such thing as that. Amen. Mm. That, there's nothing too hard yeah. That's right. for God. Amen. I am Pastor I pastor the full gospel Christian church. And I thank God for these pastors. I'm going to teach a subject vain and true religion. Two kinds of religion. Vain and true religion. If we're not careful, the devil will try to tell us mm. that we can live, but we can't live free from sin. Mm -hmm. If you can't live free from sin, you're dead. Because the payment for sin is death. Yeah. But the gift of God is he turned a life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we pastors must hold fast to nothing but the Word of God. So open your Bibles to Romans 5. And we're going to see that the Word of God is true. Romans 5. 
was five. And you'll notice before Romans 5 and 1, there's a Romans 4, 25. And before Romans 4, 25, there's a Romans 4, 24. And before Romans 4, 24, there's a Romans 4, 22. In Romans 4, 22, and therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. What was imputed to him for righteousness? Look at the 20th verse in Romans 4. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, Paul, but was strong in faith. Look what strong faith does, saints. Giving glory to God. Now, where does faith come from? Faith come from what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing come from the word. word. So if you want God to get glory, you got to read what God wrote. Amen. Romans 4, 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, Abraham. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was an old woman too. The 20th verse in Romans 4 says, He staggered not at the promises of God, through unbelief, but was strong. What's the next two words? In faith. What does strong faith do? It gives God what? Glory. And being fully persuaded. See, you got to, you got to love this book. And you got to love the author of the book. Romans 4, 21. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, you need to hear this now, God was able also to perform it. Romans 4, 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness, this is Abraham. They talk about Abraham here, not Sarah. Romans 4.23. Now it was not, if it was not written, now it was not written for his sake only that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses Jesus was and was raised again for our justification so if you believe that Jesus died and rose again for your sins you are justified you are holy you are sin free Romans 5 that would therefore in Romans 5 said, and because of Romans 4, therefore being justified by faith. Now to be just is one thing. To be justified is a process of getting everything out of your life that's not like God. This is the Bible now. This is a Bible church. We are Bible's preachers. So Romans 5 and 1 said, Therefore, because of Romans 4, because Jesus died and risen for us, therefore being justified by our faith, we have peace. 
are you listening to the television and to the radio and to the news? And do you see people dying by the thousands now, right now? Why are so many people dying because of a bug you have to have a microscope to see? When faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. These things are too big for our little penny weeny mind. But we know that faith in Christ Jesus will alleviate everything that comes from the pit of hell. Amen. I've lived 86 years and two months. I know this is a fact. A couple of weeks ago, a choir member heard a foot, put some on the foot, came and sang. A few hours ago, Quiet director, hit her foot, didn't want to crush, could have been, stood up here and sing to the glory of God. Amen. Miracles are all around us. Did you know that the message that Pastor Blackman preached, he was reading through his left eye, his right eye gone? But he drove 70 miles to get to church this morning. Can you see the goodness of God? Amen. Can you see how good? Here's a man got to drive 140 miles to come to church, and he just got one good eye. Well, that one good eye is there because he got one good God. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 it's there because he believed. I can see. It's going to be better tomorrow because he's going to say, I can see better. Faith come by hearing. You have to speak it out into your ear, to your heart, hear it, and God say, yes, do it. Amen. Go here. Amen. We had a minister here, earned his doctor's degree here. He had one eye. Dr. Michael Kernan. You wouldn't have known it if he didn't tell you. Faithful. Here's a statement that ain't going to never go away. This is what you and I need. Faith. Help me with it. Faithfulness what? And consistency. All subs again. Vain religion and true religion. Coming out of Romans 4.25, therefore means because of that. Therefore, this is information that we definitely need. Therefore being justified. What's the next two words? By faith. What justifies us? Faith in Christ Jesus, period. Now, it doesn't mean that everything on the outside going to go right. They ain't got to do it now. Baptizing a young child, I asked him, do you believe? He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I took him across the street in a man's pool where his cows drink and baptized him. Him is here now. Amen. You're back. Amen. <laughs> it's too little. He can't sit in the front of the car. He got down underneath the front seat and heard somebody on the radio. Talking about how good boy God is. Let me tell you, faith comes. Now listen to me. If faith got to come from somewhere, if you read this word, faith going to come from this word to your heart. And it is hard to do anything for God without faith. It is utterly impossible to move in a godly realm without faith. Faith is the power of, okay, God, I'll get it done for you if you'll help me. Right. 
we need God's help. And God will help us to remember little things that will spur a big thing later on. We, you see ships ten times bigger than this church, and they're driven with a very small arm, a little, a little thing that turned the water. A little bit of faith. A little bit of faith. If it doesn't move the mountain, it'll give us power to climb. Faith gives God glory. When we see a circumstance that's too big for us and know we can't do nothing about it, and we go in prayer, and that thing comes to get smaller and smaller and smaller, that's the working of Holy faith. Amen. It don't always have to move mountain. He can help us to climb mountain. And with faith ain't no mountain there. The almighty quiet out there. My subject is vain faith and vain religion. True faith and true religion. Faith come by Help me with it. Hearing. And hearing come by what? The word of God. So if you want faith, what you got to have? The word of God. And the way you hear it will constitute how much power you have with it. Amen. Did you see the devil was attacking our choir? One of the sisters had a foot or something and had to put something on the foot. Then the choir director hurt her foot. And look at this. This ministry is under attack. But how can a flea override an elephant? God said, upon this rock is the book now. I will build my church. What else did it say? And the gates of hell, whatever comes out of hell, will not prevail against it. I am encouraged. I'm instructed to tell you, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Be at peace with yourself. Here the saints read the scripture and testifying, and a woman came and caught me by my shoulder, said, I want to tell you. You prayed for my daughter that had cancer. Her cancer is gone. Ain't that something to praise? Look at him. That's something to praise God for. How come? Faith comes by hearing. So faith comes by the reading of the word. It didn't have to be me. It was not me. We prayed the prayer of what? Faith and God healed the cancer. He is a healer, you know. I don't see nobody in here with no breathing things. I don't sketch some, some little small thing gonna make you sick. Thousands are dying. We're not. Here's the statement. To God, what? Be the glory. Be the glory. For the things not the thing I've done for myself. We, we can't do nothing. For the things he has done for me and mine and mine, mine, mine and the things he's going to keep on doing for us because we got our trust in mm. him. Amen. Trust in the Lord mm. with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding in all of your ways. Mm. Look, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. We don't know which way to go. Jesus knows the way because he is the way. We're trying to get where God is. God sent Jesus where we are to take us where he is. True religion have a benefit if you live it and not self-boastful. 
one day, and in my case, it ain't going to be long now, we will stand before God Almighty. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Look how personal it is. I am free at last. Romans 5. Therefore, being justified, you get this now. What's the next two words? By faith, faith in Christ. Jesus will take all of your ungodliness away. We have peace. What came before peace, saints? Faith will justify you. And peace is a child of faith. Faith will give you peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith, a way into, by faith, into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. God woke me up early this morning at 6 o'clock and gave me a message. I'm waiting on it now. Down south they had a game called hide and seek. Uh-huh, uh-huh, 24 robbers at my door. I let them in and they came in and I hit them in the head with the rolling pin. Here's the secret. All hid Look now, ready or not, what? Yeah. Here I come. Hey! I'm right in that thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, six o'clock this morning analyzing that. Ready or not? Here? Hey! I come. Woe bunch of people that I come and their works of the works of the flesh. I will tell them, depart from me. Mm -hmm. You workers of iniquity. The secret is in this statement here. Here I come. I came that you might have life, and that you might have that life more abundantly. Man, I was writing this morning at 6 o'clock crying, and I was serving you. Vain and true religion. Everybody got one of those. Ain't nobody got both of them. I said, ain't nobody got true religion and vain religion. Romans 5, therefore being justified by faith that came by hearing and obeying the word, we have something that money can't buy. Peace with God. And our Lord Jesus to save our life to give us peace with God. <clears throat> by whom also we have access, a way in by faith, into the grace wherein we stand. So we got, we're justified, we got faith, we got peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have faith. We got grace wherein we stand. Look, and the result is, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I heard this statement. I can do all things through Christ Amen. that strengthens. Somebody wrote a song and I repeat it to you. If I ever needed the Lord before, I sure need him now. I need him every day and every hour. There's no time, even when we are asleep, <clears throat> that we don't need God. Mm -hmm. And when we are asleep, this Bible that you love so much, say God got a whole host of angels standing over you while you were asleep. 
they watch over you. Well, they watch over me. Romans 5. The third verse says, and not only so, look, this comes along with salvation now. Huh? Romans 5, 3. But we glory in tribulation. We glory when trouble is around us. When people are lying on us. When people are accusing us. When people are pointing the finger to us. We glory in that. Now we got to get to that. So that what the enemy say will stop having an effect on how we act. Right. Amen. And not only so. Look, but we glory to tribulate means to trouble. Things are wrong, people are wrong, but we are right. We are troubled also, look, knowing that tribulations, trouble, accusation, work it, the patience that you got, that faith gave to you. It helps you to be more like God when you're tribulated. That means pick up your cross. Romans 5 and 4. And patience works experience. And tribulation brings patience. And patience works tribulation. And tribulation develops patience. And patience develops experience. And experience develops hope. This is spiritual growth here, Romans 5, 5. And hope make it not a shame. Look at it. Look at it. Because the love of God, look, is shed abroad and our heart. How? By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. We trouble, but we increase. We are comfort. And when we are comforted, the responsibility as a witness is to go and share that comfort with somebody else that's going through the tribulation. Amen. It's a family tree. Love ye one another. Help ye one another. Strengthen ye one another. This, this stuff that you're giving away came because you had a problem. You, you, if you're going to be a lifeguard, you got to know how to swim. And someone that thought they know how to swim went out too far and the wave got them. Now, if you like God, you can't feel that wave. You got to go in that problem and get that person out. That's a picture of G. G. I was sinking deep in sin. Sinking to ride now, kind of over. But the grace of God, the love of God, the Son of God saw me sinking in my field. Mm. Jesus is the only person I know that can come in the field, get us out of field, and don't get the field on him. Amen. Come on here. You see, it's something within Jesus. It's God the Father in Jesus that got the authority and the power to send Jesus to get us out of everything that's not like him. He's good at it too. Come on here. Yeah. And if that person be kicking out there in that deep water when the waves out there, the lifeguard job is to knock him out. Because he'll drown the lifeguard. Amen. Look what the scriptures say. When you're in a fight, hold your peace and let God. <laughs> hey! Let God fight. Your battle. The battle is not yours. The mind say it is. The flesh say it is. Your relatives say it is. But if you're in a battle, it don't belong to you. God sent Jesus to win that battle and give us the victory over everything that's not like God. Come on here. That's why we ain't wearing no masks because the germs going around. God is taking care of. We breathe in the same air everybody else breathing. You better be thankful. Amen. You better be thankful. Oh, the fifth 
rejoice in aromas fly. And hope, look, make it not ashamed. We're not ashamed to tell people what God has done. Well, I ain't. I'll be 86 in two months. Now, that's, that's a long time to be here. And I ain't never ready to leave. I say, I ain't nowhere close to leaving. There's work for us to do yet. Amen. <clears throat> Romans 5 and 5. Look, all these things that God gives you is a benefit to them. Look. And hope make it not a shame. How come? Because the love of God, the love of God, is what? Being shed and abroad in our heart. It's in our heart, so it's coming to be big in our heart. How come? What did that? Tribulation, trials, problems, burdens, accusation, and God give you the thing that will country react those things. Mm -hmm. I sleep so good at night. I have when I was in the shop, I didn't need no one more, no uh, one well, alarm clock. I have to have a long clock now. Cause when I get through praying and God gets through talking to me, I don't care if I ain't got about a half hour. I can sleep in that half hour like I've been sleeping all night and I wake up and I ain't never out tired. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. I tell you, I'm 86. That ain't no short time to be here. But I heard this book say, God is not a respecter of person. All souls are mine, he said. Now listen to it now to learn. All souls are mine. The sanctified soul and the sinner soul. All souls are mine. But the soul that sin, though he be mine, he shall perish. So he gives us an invitation. Come unto me. All you that labor in the heavenly land, I give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. First now, you got to learn I am meek Amen. and I'm lowly in heart. And when you become my ascetic, when you become meek and lowly in heart, you will find what I am. Rest yes. for your soul. Rest. Salvation have benefits and those benefits are both physical, natural, and spiritual. You ain't got no business staying up all night crying about something. Amen. Are you listening to me? You see how you carry this service here when there's three or four folks and the Holy Spirit gives us visitation and we feel the power. Ain't nothing to do with numbers. God said, well, where that's then my ass said to him. Well, now two or three ain't a whole bunch of folk. Well, but there's two or three gathered in my name. Listen to it. There. I'm in the midst. Well, God don't come in our midst for no reason. He brings the anointed. He brings the promises. He brings salvation. He brings healing. He brings joy, love, hope. He brings all of that stuff because all the good stuff is in Jesus. We need Jesus. And God brings Jesus to us. I say, God brings Jesus to us. I just heard my spirit say, come, Lord Jesus. Just my head talking, because if Jesus is omnipresent, he ain't got no place to go, no place to come. He's everywhere at the same time. Listen now, and don't let your head get in the way. That one that's lost, mm. Jesus is in his heart. Amen. Omnipresent means 
He's everywhere. <clears throat> so when he speak to me, and I was out there playing music in them rock and roll bands, I heard him. And I told him, I ain't ready. I'll see you later, Lord. Wherever Jesus is and is obeyed, there's peace there. Mm -hmm. So don't lay down at my crown. If it's your joy at crown, Now, if you got this son, this daughter, this loss, it concerns you. But it doesn't concern you as much as the one that created that soul. Jesus said, all souls are mine. The saved soul and the lost soul, they're mine. So ask the Lord, go there. Do the them what you did for me. I wasn't worthy and you saved me. He said, yes, but you were unworthy and willing. So our subject is vain religion and true religion. And I'm in Romans 5. The sixth verse in Romans 5. For when we were yet without strength, still ain't got a whole bunch of strength. But there's a time when I didn't have enough power to pull the head off a mosquito. The sixth verse in Romans 5. For when we were without strength, didn't have no strength at all. Here's the plan of salvation. In due time, While I was weak, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us. And then while we were yet sinners, read it, Christ died for us. Then how come we can't believe that the same God will die for the one we love? Amen. God is in the business of sending Jesus to get sold back to him. All souls are mine, God said. Every one of them. But that soul that reject my salvation is moving away from my love where life lives. That soul shall surely die. But I sent Jesus. And I had that vision last night. Hide and seek. La 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 la. When Will Robbins at my door, uh, something, something. He knocked and I let him in, hit him in the head with the road at the end. And I said, Lord, where is the scripture in this? He said, they was hiding. And I sent Jesus to find them. And there's a scripture in this Bible that you love so much. The 24 elders. Look what that thing said. 24 knocked at my door. The devil is playing with that thing we call a game. It ain't no game. Ha, ha, ha! 24 robbers. You got 24 elders. One for each one of the things that's robbing you of your salvation. I'm writing that thing. I, I write and cry a little while. I write and cry a little more. You see, if you can just get by yourself a little while. See, God talked to you when you're in a crowd. That's good. He's supposed to do that. But still away. Still away, still away, so and so, and you know, and I ain't got long to be here.
trying to get by yourself. Now, in New York City, with nine billion people, a million, you can sit in the middle of 10,000 people and you can be an individual. But that's a gift. You got to be able to come out of the crowd and separate yourself while you're still in that crowd and praise God and spend it in that crowd. When the choir was singing, the lady, she come on there talking, she couldn't wait till you get through singing to tell me, you pray for my daughter that had cancer and she is free of cancer. She couldn't wait till you got through singing to tell you, God, answer the people that pray. But she had faith and I had faith and the daughter had cancer. Well, two or three of them, I said to him, where sir? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. Amen. Amen. And if one can put a thousand, mm. look how it multiply itself by ten. Yes, two can put ten thousand. Yes, sir. If three come together and you multiply ten thousand times ten, you got a hundred thousand when three people are praying. Yeah. Oh, Y'all listen to me. In one more come, you got the mother that that mother applied that ten thousand by ten thousand. You got a hundred thousand people with four people are praying. <laughs> hey, you ain't got no bigger cancer, no cancer church. Impossible. Mm -hmm. I'm watching my clock. Look at the fifth verse in Romans 5. Look, look. He gives you all these things. Faith, peace, hope, love, glory. And the fifth verse says, and hope make it not shame. And why? Because when you got hope, because the love of God, what? <coughs> Shed it abroad. <coughs> Understand this now. In our heart, we had a little bit of hope in there. We had a little bit of love in there. But when tribulation came, love came, faith came, hope came, and got in our heart, and it filled our heart with love. Love's in there, but it had to be activated. You need problem to, not, to have a prayer life. Are you listening to me? You, I, said, I said, you need problem in your life to enrich your prayer life. You ain't got to say nothing. But when problem come, we need to seek God, not because we need God, because we need faith so we can touch God. Mm -hmm. God recognized faith. Mm -hmm. Faith brings out hope. Hope will not let you be a shame. How come? Because the love of God. Y'all listen to me. The love of God is shed on a broad well. In your heart, you had a little bit of love in there. Tribulation, all these problems bring grace and long suffering and love and peace. And the grace fills your heart up with love. I say. The thing we go through <clears throat> that give us faith, that give us hope, that give us long suffering. Our heart got a little point in there called love. Mm. Love is God. When you increase God, you increase in your submission to God, your love for God, the fact that you suffer to show God. That's, a, that's what it means when it's increase in your heart, your heart run over. That's why your shout come from. You, you can't you can't imitate it. Well, you can. You can. But you can't imitate a shout here and fool me. I will come to you and say, sit down now, because I'm going to get a baseball bat. Sit down now. Don't let the devil play in the presence of the saints. Amen. Don't let them do that. <laughs> My subject is, and I got 10 minutes. Vain religion.
and true religion. Everybody here, everybody anywhere got one of these kinds of religions. I stopped reading books written by other folk. And I'd be, be reading good and I'd be enjoying it, and then they turn left and say, oh, no, that's wrong right there. So I started writing books. I got a library full of books that came out of this book right here. So I had to go back to books that I wrote in the 70s and try to figure out what did I mean when I said that? Because <laughs> when I was writing, it wasn't me writing. Right. I was subject again. Vain and true religion. Mm -hmm. I got about eight minutes. I'm in Romans 5. The sixth verse says, For when we were yet without strength, no sinner got strength. In due time, when God got ready, in yes. such a time in diverse manner, mm -hmm. in due time, look what happened. Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah. So the ungodly don't got now kind of strength. Say amen. amen. He ain't got no strength. Glory. Jesus died to give him strength. Fifth, strength in a sinner is faith in Christ Jesus that brought the likeness of God into the life of man. We, we got to be godly. For scarcely, 7 verse in Romans 5, for scarcely for a righteous man we won't die, yet preadventure for a good man someone even dare to die, but God committed this love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, read it, Christ died for us when we were sinners. Good God Almighty. Amen. If, if Christ died for sinners, how come we don't like him? How can we condemn him? Christ came to save him, died to do it. So when you hate the presence of a sinner, you out of order. You hate God and his work. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you again, when I first passed off passing this church, lady came here with a dress up to here. She was kneeling at the altar. Everybody was looking at what you know, what your name. But look, that woman was looking for Jesus. Never mind. Never mind that. I came to serve God. Help me, somebody. That's what sin do. Mm. Satan don't want sinners to come to this place here. Amen. Because Satan know when they get here, we're going to tell them, Jesus saves. Yeah. Jesus saves. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus saves. That's all our message is here. <laughs> Jesus saved to the utmost. Amen. And I just heard a Word here. Jesus saved to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. I was shown up lost when I got saved. Y'all just halfway lost. But I was lost when I got saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is why I'm accused of preaching too long. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you boldly. That's not your business. Amen. Amen. Look what this Bible says. To whom mm -hmm. little is given. Hey! Little mm -hmm. is expected. But to whom much is given, right. much is expected. Amen. I'm going to do this till I hear this sound come up here. I got five minutes. In the name, this is what I say to my wife when I go to visit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, you have to flee. When I first started saying she'd be moving her lips, then the voice started coming up. 
Tell me who can stand mm -hmm. before us when we call on them. Great name, his name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. We have the victory. And when I said victory, re, 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 she be wanting me to say that she smiled. God work in mysterious ways is wonders to perform. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. This is the word of God. It is the truth. This book say, you shall know the truth. Help me with it. Yeah. And the yeah. truth yeah. will make you what? Free! Amen. Here's our pastor, Pastor Rick. Amen. Come on. Bless the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. This guy's a good guy. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, I haven't sat in this chair in a little while. Yes, sir. Let's take a look at some natural. Let's take a look at ourselves. Let's let's take a look at our natural self. Can we turn this down, sister? Yes. No, not do that. How about I do that? I do that. How about that? Take a look. Take a natural look at our natural James, our natural River, our natural Pastor Blackman, our natural Pastor Will. Take a look at our natural. Take a natural look at ourselves. Let's do an inventory. Now, as a result of what Pastor Blackman, how Pastor Blackman teach and how Pastor Wheeler teach, I'm able to sit up here and tell these silly stories that I'm about to tell. And these silly stories that I heard that I'm about to tell actually made a difference for me. So I'm going to say no say silly stories to you. And the first one is, look, there were two men, they were running a road race, a long road race, I believe it was a marathon. And when the race was over, they saw uh, a sign that says, free bagels and Gatorade. So one of the runners, he says to his friend, he says, hey, let's go get a free bagel. And the other one says, but the line is too long. Mm -hmm. And the one says, but the bagel and the Gatorade is free. Mm -hmm. And the other one says, but the line is what? Long. Too long. I'm pretty sure most of us has been in a place like that where we saw something that we really wanted, but we really didn't want to stand in what? That, that long line. And as this man began to describe this conversation that he was having with his friend, he says this. He says, I recognize that there are two types of people. I want you to find yourself in this. There are two types of people. There are people that see what they want. Then there are people that can only see what's in between them hmm. and what they want. The question is, is where are you in there? Are you a person that can only see what you want and you're willing to go after it and get it? Praise him. Glory. Or are you the latter? Praise a person that can only see the long line or the hard work. Praise him. That touched me. Mm -hmm. And it made me recognize, man, if there's some things you want, you're going to have to go and, and you're going to have to go get them, right? Yes, sir. Because what I'm coming to find out is that sometimes an excuse is easier than creating and executing a plan to achieve my goal. Sometimes an excuse is easier than the hard work that's necessary to get what I want. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Because I guarantee you that most of us have given a great deal of excuses why we are the way we are. And then we put it on God's shoulders. 
Then we put it on mama and daddy's shoulders. We put it on our husband and our wife's shoulders. And we blame our bosses. We blame our co-workers. Sometimes it's easier to make an excuse than to execute a plan to fix that problem. Amen? Amen. So here's another one for you. Sometime back, just before the 18th century, around the 18th century, there was this thing called, I believe it's pronounced prayerable fever, and it was called Black Death of Childbed. Black Death of Childbed. And what this fever was is when a woman would give birth, within 48 hours she would die. So we're back in the Renaissance age where you had all this science and this math and this music and you had all these medical breakthroughs and you had these men who considered themselves geniuses and doctors and they had set out to figure out what this problem was and how they were going to fix the problem. So there was a doctor that came through. His name was Oliver Wendell Holmes sometime in the mid 1800s. He watched the doctors, and he told the doctors, he says, Docs, you all are a part of the problem. And because the doctors said to themselves, well, we're looking for the answer, and we're going to find a solution to this problem, they could not see that they were part of this problem. So what they did is they ostracized Dr. Holmes, and they called him crazy. Dr. Holmes says, look, I need you to understand that you are a part of the problem. Well, what do you mean we're a part of the problem? The same doctors that are giving birth to children in the evening are the same doctors that are committing the autopsies on the dead women the, the morning for. So they were doing autopsies, looking for an answer, but there was also delivering children later on in the day. Dr. Holmes says, you doctors are a part of the problem. For 30 years, and you got a couple understand that this went on for 100 years or so. This black deaf child bed. 100 years. And it got so bad in certain areas and in certain hospitals that the death rate for women in that 48 period was 70%. Seven out of every 10 women that went in the hospital to give birth to a child died within two days. Dr. Holmes says, Doc, you're part of the problem. They ostracized him and called him crazy for 30 more years until somebody said, Doc, before you deliver a child, after you've committed, done this autopsy, we need you to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. They were spreading the very death that they were looking for a cure to. So we quoted something a few weeks ago. Sometimes the best way to stop a problem is to stop being a part of it. Amen. Sometimes we are a part of our own Thirty years. How many unnecessary deaths were a result of them not listening to Dr. Holmes? Is it possible that we could be our own problem? That's even less amens. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Still the truth. Yeah. Us, these brilliant doctors in this Renaissance age, with all their profound knowledge and wisdom and all their understanding, weren't washing their hands. So the cure that they were looking for, they were the death themselves. Glory. Is it possible that
that my mouth could be my own death. I know I want to blame the devil. But now I say he ain't in me. But yet the stuff that come out of me ain't of him. Is it possible that the things that I'm saying, that the way that I'm thinking is my problem? Well, even though you don't say yeah, I say yeah. Okay. You say yeah too? Is it possible that I'm my problem? They destroyed Dr. Wendell's reputation <clears throat> because of their brilliance. They were unable to see them. Believing that they were the solution, believing that they were the savior, it was impossible in their perspective for them to be the problem. Hmm. Up to that point, didn't recognize that there was a thing called germs. Can you imagine that all the people that had died in the past as a result of their wisdom? You gotta wash your hands. Saints, you gotta wash your hands. Huh? And I and I know we do this temporary thing called hand sanitizer. Huh? But if I fall out there in the grass and my face fall in some some plop out there, all right? Don't give me no hand sanitizer, man. Yes, Sister Larry, give me a soap for the rat. Huh? We really not look. Are we? Are, are we a generation of a temporary fix? If your hands are dirty, what? Wash your hands. Now, yeah, there are some things that we can do until we can get to the place of the soap and water. But carry that stuff with you, man. And I'm not really talking about washing your hands. Write this down for those that are taking notes. Wash your hands. Write that down. Here's another one. How much skill does it take for you to keep your opinion to yourself? Mm -hmm. How much skill does that take? Because we run around every day talking to people about this and that. Everybody feels that they have the right to give their opinion about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. right. right? How much skill does it take to keep your opinion to yourself? To yourself? How much skill does it take to keep your opinion to yourself? Wake up the, the snore back there for me, somebody. <laughs> Here's another one for you. Write this down. This is how to stop an argument. If you never want to argue another day in your life, do this. Huh? Do this. Now, I know all this stuff ain't spiritual, but all this stuff is spiritual. I can find a dozen scriptures for everybody. Huh? If you never want to argue another day in your life, this is what you do. You ready, Brother Dad? This is what you do. Ask questions instead of making statements. If you ask a question, that's it. You're looking for something else, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, well, what else is that? No, just ask questions instead of making statements. Mm -hmm. hmm? Somebody wake the snore up again. 
Make your story up. <laughs> so, the way you stop an argument is to ask questions and don't make statements. There are certain people, there are some people, and most of us fit in this category oftentimes, especially when a conversation is heated and there's this thing called an argument. Most of the times we're listening for the purpose to respond and not listening to learn. Right? So if we listen to learn and we simply ask questions, you don't have to argue. There's no need to, there is no need to argue. There is no need to argue. So, so my wife, she's not an arguer anyway, but whenever she uh, 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 said something, there's a, a conversation about to get heated, you know what my response is? Hmm. Just simply, <laughs> now instead of both of us being mad, she just mad. Now I can walk away. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Ain't no need in arguing about nothing. Do you hear me? There is no need to argue about nothing. Some folks listen so that they can respond. They're not listening. Here's what I'm about to say. Listen at this. This is, this is, and I know this sounds more, more like a lecture, but listen at this. I think mean, for those who are taking notes, I, mean, I got a long statement for you to write down. Or I'll write it down and make a copy and give it to you later. Let's do it that way. Taking a look at our natural selves, I'm trying to understand from some perspective of teaching, look, if God wanted us to be all spiritual all the time, why did he put us in a natural body? Why are we the way we are? Write this down, or I'll write it down and give it to you later. A habit. We have to take a look at our natural man, this guy that you're looking at. We can say that he doesn't exist, and we can say that he's not important, but as a result of what this natural man do, this other fellow can burn in hell for the rest and forever, and ever, and for an eternity, right? So, a habit, this is what I wrote down the other day, a habit is a redundant, now, this can be easily preached against. Said it's a lie. It's okay. A habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions. Okay? A habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious <clears throat> thoughts, behaviors, emotions that are acquired through repetition. It becomes a habit. So our head is supposed to be, our mind is supposed to be, this inner guy is supposed to be in control of this outer guy. Right? Is this hand supposed to be, be in control of this body? Mm -hmm. Huh? No? My body is supposed to be in control of my mind? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to, this head is supposed to tell this body, I ain't talking once in Christ, never out, and I know the scripture just as good as you do, so be careful. We're talking about the natural side of what we're looking at. This head is supposed to tell this body, get up, go eat right. Get up, go do this. But because we have created these negative habits, because this, the body has done it so much, this guy that you're looking at has done it so much that it can do it better than the head has ever done. We get up in the morning on 
the same side of the bed. We brush our teeth the same way. We, have the, we do the same thing every single morning the same way for years. It has become a habit. I remember pastor saying years ago how on a Sunday morning for, I don't know, 20 plus years, he would fast before he came to church until he recognized that it wasn't fasting, it was a ritual. He done it because he had always done it. And, but we, that's how most of our lives are, saints. A habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts. Now, I ain't talking about human personality. I ain't wheel, mind, emotion. That ain't what I'm talking about. Okay? I know the proper teaching of that. I know how it works. Okay, we ain't talking about that. I'm talking about this actual head and this actual body. Okay, but now this inner man got to deal with this head and this body. You got to bring this guy in control. Because if you don't, the, the other guy, because it ain't what you see, it ain't my mind and what you see that's going to hell. It's the other guy on the inside. So we have to understand why. Now we can say we have these habits because of sin. But that's not always necessarily true. What if the habit is bread? Bread. Bread. Eat bread. Wheat bread. Wheat germ. White bread. What if that's a habit of yours? What if corn chips is a habit? Huh? What? As silly as it sounds, a habit is a redundant set of automatic, listen to that, automatic unconscious. We do it and we don't even think about doing it and we don't even know we do it. What I figured out is when I get depressed, what do I do? I turn to bread. When I'm angry, what do I do? I turn to bread. Food. They call it comfort food for a reason. When I'm depressed, when I'm hurting, when I'm angry, I will blow that diet as sure, that lifestyle change as sure as my name is James. I have to recognize me. And I can pray for the last 49 years and not recognize that I have a bad habit. Right. Yeah. It could be spiritual and you can get off the altar after preaching two hours and go fill your body with the thing that's killing it. It's a bad habit. Now, you can die and go to heaven with that bad habit. You're just going to die a little sooner. But this is what we're talking about. We have to look at this is a automatic. It is automatic for me when I am hurting to turn to cheese and it's automatic. If there is an automatic response, a sandwich and chips, it is automatic. I guarantee you, every last one of you in here have an automatic response to certain stimuli. A woman, she just said it. There's so many women. Oh my God, chocolate and ice cream. When they're depressed and when they're hurting, they respond. But we need to look at why. Because we have done it so long and so often that the mind, who is supposed to be the boss, relinquishes in control to this guy here. So now I'm going to say something that sounds upsetting to you, but look, the mind has took on the responsibility the body has took all the responsibility of the mind. So the body just became your boss. But what you're doing is automatic and unconscious. We're doing things, don't even know why. And nobody's talking about the why. We can lump it under sin. We sure can, but we need to divide it up in sections and talk about the why. I am not a sinner because when I 
depressed, I go to a sandwich. I am not a sinner because I'm depressed. <laughs> Somebody got to talk about the why. How do we deal with this? First thing is we got to recognize this is a habit. Yeah. And this habit is preventing me from reaching my goal the way I can I, I can preach God's word and be six hundred pounds. But I believe that God would prefer me to be about 215. Well, I know I would prefer to be here. It's a habit. So what happened is the head is supposed to be telling this natural guy, this natural head is supposed to be telling this natural guy, get up and walk, get up and run, get up and exercise, get up and do right, get up and eat your vegetables. But that's the last thing this body wants. A habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that are acquired through much, much, much repetition. Amen. We've been doing it for so long. It sounds a little like, like this in 2020. I was talking to a lady on the phone, and she was saying, man, but girl, this is how the women say it. Yes. I'll say it the way they say it. Girl, you know me. Which means you know how I'm going to respond when this stimuli or this happens. Well, that's not good. Saints. It's not good for us to be predictable and then to brag about Amen. being predictable. To brag Glory. about responding in a negative way. Because that's normally how you know me. You know this is negatively normally a negative response. Yeah. I'm about to tear some stuff up. Well, yeah, okay. <sighs> These habits are unconscious. Mm. You can have Jesus in your life through and through and have bad natural Pastor says, man, I, I get up late at night and I watch me a cowboy movie. I give me some vanilla ice cream and I give me some uh, 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 vanilla wafers. I don't gain a pound. Man, if I ate a bowl of ice cream and vanilla wafers every day, I'd be 450 pounds. I'm glad that's not my habit. But bread is. And because the, we have these unrecognized habits, or maybe they are recognized, maybe because we have these unrecognized habits, we're living an unfulfilling life with Jesus. Mm. Now, how is that possible? Amen. To have an unfulfilling life with Jesus in our hearts. Mm. Tell you what it looked like. It looked like confusion. Say with confusion. How is it possible? How do we pull that together? I don't know, but we've become very good at it. Hmm. Now, I know it's not supposed to be. Amen. So, I, I don't mean to mention it, but you have these men who wear robes and are always bald headed and they put themselves in the mountains, right? And they stop speaking for years at a time because they're trying to eliminate the temptations and those negative thoughts. They're trying to remove themselves from all of it. You still got to deal. You can remove yourself from all the visual uh, 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 negative things. You can remove yourself from all the audio things. You can, you, you can remove yourself from all that, but you still need somebody to help you deal with it. And if we don't recognize that we have a habit, it'll never go away. If you do not first admit that you are lost, you will not stop and ask for what? Directions. You're not going to ask for directions unless you prideful like me. I'm going to find all I don't know if that's me or just a man that I don't know. Saints, I love you. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. 
A habit is a redundant mm -hmm. set of automatic, automatic, unconscious thoughts, mm -hmm. behaviors, and emotions. Again, we're not talking about will, mind, emotion. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that lie. We're talking about this, what we look at, what we're talking to. We're talking about this natural stuff. Okay? For those who are taking notes, write this down. And I wrote this a nice way because I'm in church. I wrote it this way. Maybe I can't blame myself talking about finding ourselves in terrible situations and terrible relationships, to finding myself with a bad attitude, with a bad perspective. Uh, that's that's when, I, when, I, when I write this down in bad places, with a bad this and bad that. When I wrote this down, this is what was in my mind. This is where I was coming from. I may not be able to blame myself for being where I am, but I can sure blame myself for staying where I am. Amen. Okay? I don't care what situation you're in. We can take the weak side of it and say it ain't my fault, it ain't my fault. We can. All right? But what I am saying, once you recognize where you are and it's not where you want to be, I can blame myself for staying right there. I don't have to stay there. Once I recognize it's not where God wants me to be, it's not where I want to be, and this thing is killing me, I can do something about that. I can do something about that. Then, as I talk to all these hundreds and hundreds of people, you believe it or not, there are people who don't even know that they have a choice. They don't know that I have a choice? You mean I don't have to do that thing? Saints, I love you. Here's something a little bit more funny. Listen to this. And I need to blame somebody if it go wrong. So, I don't know. I mean, I, thank you. It's his fault. Mm. So, this is a silly, a silly story that applies to all of us. Silly joke. There's this baby bird sitting in a nest. Baby bird falls out of a nest. There was a tree in the middle of a cow field. Baby bird falls out of the nest. And the baby bird is freezing to death. A cow sees the bird and takes mercy on the bird and plops a big one right on top of the bird. The bird is really upset because the cow just stood over him and plopped on him. But what the bird didn't understand is that he was no longer free. So while this bird, baby bird, is squeaking and squeaking and squeaking and squeaking because he's so angry with what the cow just did to him, a coyote in the other field came over and saw the baby bird. The coyote takes the baby bird out of the plop. And he cleans the baby bird off. Then what? Coyote picked the baby bird up and ate him. The moral of the story is everyone that plops on you is not your enemy. And everyone that takes the plop off of you is not your friend. And for God's sake, when you are neck deep in the plop, keep your mouth shut. Amen. Why? Because the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to what shall be revealed. What? Huh? And all these things work for the good of those who what? Love the Lord. Look, they plopped on my Jesus and he never said a what? 
and look at us as a result of it. Everyone that plops on you is not your enemy. And everyone that takes the plop off of you, show it your friend. And when you find yourself standing neck deep in plop, <laughs> because the coyote would have never known that the bird had fallen out of the nest except for the baby bird complaining about the plot that saved his life in the first place. Is yeah. God a good God? Amen. Yeah, yes, yes. Let's give God a hand. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm sorry about them silly stories, but find us, most of us find ourselves in plot often. Now, once I end up in the plot, maybe I can't blame myself for it being there. But certainly I can blame myself for staying there. Me running my mouth and complaining about what is and what ain't ain't helping me to get out. Amen. I need to flap my wings and get up out of the plot. What you think? Do something about it. Pray, then do something about it. Certainly, staying in the plot and saying that it's God's responsibility to get me out ain't the answer either. Because the very same thing that dropped on you to warm you up and it's soft and warm, in a minute, it's going to turn into concrete. It's going to Hold you there. Now, Sister Wheeler used to talk about this thing all the time called a stronghold. Right. If the plot dries around you up to your neck, uh -huh. Glory. it has just become <laughs> a strong, yes, a stinky yes. stronghold. <laughs> We're going to take off for this morning. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for bearing with us.